our work focuses a lot upon the ready-made object. It takes many forms, many mediums, but I guess there is a, a thread of um, concept that goes through. Things such as change, movement. Um, Time. Our place within the world or our place within history. All in a ball of consumerism and capitalist living in the mm. early 21st century. We are both formally trained as artists and we also went to the same art school, which informs our aesthetic sense, our aesthetic judgments, but it also informs... A spatial sense as well. And we were both trained under the same lecturers. As a collaboration, I think that helps us immensely because we, we do see things in a very similar fashion although we have very different ideas and concepts. We had solo practices for a decade before we actually joined forces. But our work has always been a bit massive. You know, logistically needs others to help. Um, that's how we began collaborating. practice is pretty broad. It's sculptural, installation, site-specific, generally. It often looks at how one system is put upon an object or another type of system and how that system in effect makes the work or the object redundant or obsolete. Quite often we look at the domestic sphere, um, particularly the home, whether the home needs something that is like a, a house or something that you carry with you when you're travelling, or what becomes the home when you don't have one. So the Cordial Home Project was titled that because um, we wanted to use the term cordial because it's looking at the essence of home. Like a cordial is, you know, the, the re reduced kind of flavour that you put with water to make a drink. And so we thought, well, that's what you'd simply do with, with this house, you know, it's, it's on a literal level. But also cordial is a term you use when you're cordially invited to someone's home. It's basically a cheesy pun. Well, this work we made in Berlin in the time we were in the Australia Council Residency, the Kunstlerhaus Britannien, and it was every single piece of waste, printed, printed, or printed waste, mm. yeah, that entered our studio. At the time, we were really thinking about the idea of um, a picnic, and in a sense, we were kind of transplanting, we were thinking of that concept merge with, merging with the concept of the um, expatriate lifestyle and what it is to be the expatriate because picnicking is a similar kind of thing where you doing something is it it's not permanent but you are kind of carrying out some kind of activity in a space for a period mm. and what what is permanent and what is impermanent and what stays and yeah. Our practice really does go from things that are quite intimate objects to things that are quite large installations and the way we, we plan and we project what we want to do is reliant upon the space that it will be shown in. In um, regard to using the ready-made object, um, I think we, we do consider that 
the, the audience in such a way that we, we hope that they can kind of latch on or get some kind of understanding of the work because it's something that they're, they're so familiar with it. It exists within their realm. It's always refreshing when you hear um, someone reading into your work something that you had never seen. For us, it takes us a while to actually digest what it is we've just made, particularly with the new work on the lawn out the front of, in, at the front of the MCA with the plane um, suspended in scaffolding. We ha we've had most of our questions steered towards that, but of course it's like, wow, you know, we've just made that. It's really hard to, I feel like we need to digest things before being able to realise, well, that's exactly what that was about. Inspiration comes from oh, the most banal things, usually. I guess like we've seen a lot of things and then things kind of percolate into our consciousness and then out into the work. So it's kind of a constant, <coughs> a constant process of seeing things and then digesting them and then producing work. I mean, we're just about to, we're going to spend the next year in, in Malaysia. So that should be something else again. Mm. Or maybe it, it's seeing the irony or the, the ridiculousness of situations um, that I find more inspiring. I don't really feel like I want to change the world through my art. The thing I like about artwork though is that it, it or art in general, is that it offers an individual perspective on life. And cause you, because usually we're shown like a perspective that it's like um, being dispersed through the media or through like film or something and these things are so filtered and and there's often a, a political kind of um take on it or some kind of commercial concern or something else where else uh there's still the possibility not that it happens all the time or whatever but there's the possibility that you can just have quite a pure idea and it, it is a viewpoint and it's a viewpoint of an individual and i think that's kind of that in itself is kind of something special and and something that, um, yeah, is kind of like a unique experience. Whether that brings about a form of change or whatever, I don't know. But when you come across something like that, that can like just really speak to you directly, and you can realise, oh, maybe I'm not the only person that thinks like that, or you know, you find some kind of kinship, or you know. And I think that that idea that you know you're not alone in your kind of thought or something is, is, is kind of heartwarming or, mm. or whatever, encouraging.